It's that time again. Graduating students are preparing for their transition from classroom to workforce. Career Services at Texas State offers assistance to graduates to help them land that first job. So we work with uh, the students on providing some mock interview opportunities, so really to give them all those tools they need uh, to transition from being a student to a professional. Many students use the job placement services through the Jobs for Cats database. I'm a graduate and I'm looking for a, a uh, position that uh, accommodates my degree. And, uh, and they also set me up for an interview so they can uh, follow up on my progress. Students can make appointments with counselors to seek career advice before and after graduation. So what we do is we have different career advisors that are for the different colleges. Um, they're actually staff uh, that are going to assist them really in a different variety of ways um, and specifically to the individual uh, and what the needs are for them. Career services at Texas State help many students with practice interviews, resume referrals and job postings and a host of other services to prepare students for the working world outside the walls of Texas State. For Bobcat Update, I'm Evan Bolton. Many streets in San Marcos will likely be under construction for at least the next two years. Anissa Bohannon tells us how it's affecting the business on the square. Construction along LBJ Drive means fewer customers are dropping in to shop. Alex Castillo says she's doing what she can to get the word out that her favorite shop is open. I've been asked to volunteer here because the business has been so slow, because people just walk right past and they don't want to stop because the construction is just so loud and there's dust everywhere. Construction began in September, closing East Hutchison from LBJ to CM Allen. Businesses in the area have seen foot traffic in their stores drop off dramatically. Local businesses are now competing with not only each other, but parking and the construction that seems to be taking forever to complete. Store owners say the lack of parking is a major concern. A lot of potential customers believe the shops are now closed. Eventually they're going to start working on sidewalks, so then, then what? You know, there's not going to be any foot traffic. Like if I had a bad month here, I'd be dead in the water. If I had like a full bag of I would just be screwed. Store owners want to assure customers that they're still open for business. The construction project is scheduled to be finished in 2014. For Bobcat Update, I'm Anissa Bohannon. Good afternoon, this is Bobcat Update. I'm Matt Southall. The 2012 elections are over and the results are in. Among the races, we'll tell you are two involving local residents who ran for federal and state offices. I'm Jenny Sessions, thanks for joining us. President Barack Obama has been reelected, defeating his Republican challenger, Mitt Romney. Evan Bolton tells us more in this Bobcat Update. Just as the pre-election polls had suggested, the outcome in the presidential race was extremely tight in terms of the popular vote. The Electoral College, on the other hand, was more decisive. Governor Romney conceded defeat shortly before midnight. I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction, but the nation chose another leader, and so Ann and I join with you to earnestly pray for him and for this great nation. Thank you, and God bless America. You guys are the best. President Obama and his family watched election results in his hometown of Chicago, and it was there that he appeared after victory was assured. I just spoke with Governor Romney, and I congratulated him and Paul Ryan on a hard-fought campaign. In the weeks ahead, I also look forward to sitting down with Governor Romney to talk about where we can work together to move this country forward. Here in Texas, the Romney-Ryan ticket dominated at the polls, just as it did in most of the South and the Plains states. Republican Ted Cruz was elected U.S. Senator to take the seat being vacated by Kay Bailey Hutchison, who is retiring. Cruz defeated Democrat Paul Sadler. Reporting for Bobcat Update, I'm Evan Bolton. The Republican Party won most of its races easily in Texas. However, in Hayes County, several Democratic incumbents were held on for new terms. Hayes County Commissioner Debbie Gonzalez Inglesby and Justice of the Peace Joanne Prado were among those re-elected yesterday. Also, Democrat Lloyd Doggett, who had served for many years as a congressman representing Central Texas, will be returning to Washington. He won a race closely watched by many in San Marcos because his challenger for the 35th House seat, 
was a former mayor of the city. Christina Ochoa has more in this Bobcat update. Susan Narvaez served as San Marcos mayor for six years before she decided to run for federal office. The Narvaez campaign watched election results at the embassy suites in San Marcos. This seemed a fitting place because construction of the hotel and its adjoining convention center had been one of the triumphs for her administration as mayor. She and her supporters were hoping last night would be a victory party. Susan was a mayor in San Marcos three terms and she worked diligently. I watched her work diligently to help that university become what it is today, grow and prosper. Among the many supporters attending last night's party were volunteers and interns who have worked for Narvaez. Working for Susan was wonderful. Uh, it was an overwhelming experience, but overall a good one. And I'm sure it's gonna help uh, me with my future career. Narvaez's campaign netted 32% of the vote against the incumbent congressman who is running for re-election in a newly drawn district. Doggett took 64% of the vote. Even in defeat, Narvaez says she felt her team had been victorious. And we can run the kind of race that our children and grandchildren can be proud of and that they can say, oh, I can go out and speak my ideas, but I don't have to get ugly about it. And I think that's the victory in this. Reporting for Bobcat Update, I'm Christina Ochoa. A Texas State English professor was on the ballot yesterday seeking a position on the State Board of Education. Rebecca Bell Metero, a Democrat, faced Republican incumbent Ken Mercer. We learn more about that race from Eric Pompa. Thanks, Jenny. Bell Metero was the candidate for the District 5 seat. She had hoped of becoming an agent for change. The State Board of Education plays a key role in selecting textbooks in Texas and beyond. Belmetta Rowe's attempt to unseat Mercer fell short. Belmetta Rowe says she got involved in the race out of concern that the board had become too extreme. We have to have teachers on the board and we have to have people who don't bring a political agenda to the board, but who want to have the very best textbooks, the very most up-to-date information in all of the subject areas. Belmetta Rowe says the state board's revision of science and social studies textbooks should alarm Texans. I don't want the textbook publishers to feel that they have to revise their material for uh, specifically for the desires of the extremists in Texas. Bill Metterow says choosing textbooks is an important function of the state board and she wants students to have the means to gain knowledge and comprehension. We can't have students not understanding uh, how economics works, how science works. Uh, we have to have a student body that understands history. Bill Mero says as far as, she, as far as she's concerned, the battle is not over. She doesn't rule out the possibility of again running for the State Board of Education. Reporting live from the Quad, I'm Eric Pompa. Back to you guys in the studio. Construction on Sussum Drive has motorists and pedestrians looking to use more caution than usual with half of the street closed. Drivers are confined to two lanes with only a few orange cones separating oncoming traffic. Flaggers might be present while the crews work on an underground water line. Students should also note that the bus stop at State Street has been temporarily displaced because of the construction. The project began in late October and is expected to last for about another month. Many streets in San Marcos will likely be under construction for at least the next two years. Anissa Bohannon tells us how it's affecting the business on the square. Construction along LBJ Drive means fewer customers are dropping in to shop. Alex Castillo says she's doing what she can to get the word out that her favorite shop is open. I've been asked to volunteer here because the business has been so slow, because people just walk right past and they don't want to stop because the construction is just so loud and there's dust everywhere. Construction began in September, closing East Hutchison from LBJ to CM Allen. Businesses in the area have seen foot traffic in their stores drop off dramatically. Local businesses are now competing with not only each other, but parking and the construction that seems to be taking forever to complete. Store owners say the lack of parking is a major concern. A lot of potential customers believe the shops are now closed. Eventually they're gonna, they're gonna start working on sidewalks, so then, then what? You know, there's not gonna be any foot traffic. Like if I had a bad month here, I'd be dead in the water. If I had like a full bad month, I would just be screwed. Store owners want to assure customers that they're still open for business. The construction project is scheduled to be finished in 2014. For Bobcat Update, I'm Anissa Bohannon.
When we return, we'll take a look at the recent trends in gas prices. Also, find out how exercise can boost your life expectancy. Stick around. <coughs> oh, oh, I don't feel good. I'm gonna call the health center. This is Manny, appointment clerk. How can I help you? Hi, I'm really not feeling good and I really need to see somebody today. The Student Health Center offers quality care in their state-of-the-art facility. Conveniently located on a campus across from the LBJ Student Center, they offer same-day appointments with an easy self-check-in desk in the receptionist lobby. The health center is equipped with an experienced healthcare staff, including licensed physicians and nurse practitioners. It offers primary care, women's health, and psychiatric services. There's an on-site laboratory, digital x-ray machine, and a full-service pharmacy. It's your one-stop shop for health care, with convenient pay options for college students. To make an appointment, call 512-245-2161. Or to learn more about the Student Health Center, go to www.healthcenter.txstate.edu. It's early November, and instead of bringing out the jackets and packing away the shorts, students at Texas State have reason to believe that summer has been extended. Seoul Park is still a popular hangout. Bicycles are still a favorite way to get around. With the temperature hitting a high of 81 degrees today, students are taking advantage of the weather. Don't get used to this though. Starting the next week, the overnight lows are expected to drop to the low 30s. Construction crews are back to work today at the World Trade Center site. A week after Superstorm Sandy slammed New York City, the New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the 750 construction workers have returned to work at Ground Zero. The 16-acre site was flooded by sandy storm surge last week. Most of the water has since been pumped out. The governor says crews have also removed approximately seven feet of water from the flooded September 11th Memorial and Museum at Ground Zero. The U.S. stock market fell today. According to Bloomberg.com, Bloomberg the decline is a result of President Obama's re-election. All 10 groups in the S&P 500 had the biggest losses in financial energy and technology shares. The market fell 1.9% this afternoon, making this the biggest market decline since June. Investors will now turn their focus to the $607 billion tax increase and federal spending cuts that are set to kick in this January. If you've been to the gas station lately, you may have noticed a price change in a direction that we all like. The national average price for regular gas is down to $3.55 a gallon. That's down 21 cents since late October. Hurricane Sandy helped cut the demand for gas, which contributed to the lower cost. Also, crude oil prices have been declining lately. Drivers in Memphis, Tennessee have the cheapest gasoline in the country, and San Francisco has the highest. Survey publisher Trilby Lundberg predicts prices will drop another 10 to 20 cents over the next few weeks. Exercise can lengthen your life, even if you're overweight or obese. Researchers from the National Cancer Institute and Harvard Medical School analyzed studies of more than 630,000 people. They found that regular, moderate, intensity exercise can boost life expectancy, even with an unhealthy BMI or body mass index. On the flip side, the doctors say healthy weight people who don't exercise had about three or fewer years of life. The team of doctors say people should at least get two and a half hours of moderate to vigorous exercise each week. An Indianapolis woman has beaten the odds by winning the lottery twice in three months. Lena Eaton, a 91-year-old great-grandmother, won $300,000 on a Hoosier lottery quick-draw ticket matching 10 of 20 numbers. And on Thursday, she claimed a winning $5 scratch-off to rake in another 100,000 big ones. Eaton, who has six children, 16 grandchildren, and more than 20 great-grandchildren, says she'll use the money to renovate her home and help her loved ones. It's, uh, it's nice to see somebody actually win the lottery who wants to do something good with the money and help out those around them, you know what I mean? I'm just saying I wouldn't mind to be one of her grandkids. It would be nice, I agree. That's all for today's Bobcat Update. Join us tomorrow at 4.30. Have a great evening.